Welcome back to Music Kingdom. In this video, we are comparing the recently officially released demo version of Michael Jackson's Behind the Mask with the 2010 posthumous version of the same song. Why? Because we're music nerds and that's what we do on this channel. Hang tight. Hey music lovers, my name is Francis. If you'd like to support the work I put into these videos, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel even further, you'll find Music Kingdom's Patreon and other affiliate links in the description below. All right, now before we give both versions of the song a listen, let's first briefly talk some context of the song Behind the Mask. In case you didn't know, the song Behind the Mask is actually by a Japanese group called Yellow Magic Orchestra, otherwise known as YMO, from the year 1979. The story goes that Michael Jackson would hear the song because of course, he would, and wanted to lay his own vocals and lyrics on the track, which was initially just an instrumental song by Yellow Magic Orchestra. Now, ultimately, the demo did not make the final cut of the album Thriller, but that is around the time when the demo was recorded, and that would have been the album it was supposed to be on. Now, there are a number of reasons why demos, which essentially are unfinished products that are kind of like rough drafts in the music industry, there are a number of reasons why they don't make an album. Sometimes, in the case of Michael Jackson, you're such a perfectionist that you have, say, a hundred rough draft demos that could make an album that is only going to be nine or ten songs and you just kind of weed them out. To my knowledge, however, in the specific case of Behind the Mask, there was some kind of credit dispute, probably because it wasn't his song. And then of course, I would also just in my own opinion, assume that with all the other tracks that were already going to be on Thriller, maybe it just wasn't good enough to make the cut. Eventually in 2010, about a year and some change removed from Michael's passing, the posthumous album Michael came out, which uh, is a controversial album to say the least. Now, if you haven't watched one of this channel's more recent videos, I did make one about a demo that recently came out on the 40th anniversary version of the album Thriller. It was a jam-packed album loaded with goodies and demos for the fans to hear. Some of them have already been on the internet for a while. Others were brand new to our ears. And in that video, I did react to and kind of review one of those demos called Who Do You Know? But in that video, it turned into a massive rant of me just bitching about the shortcomings of the Michael Jackson estate. Why do I bring this up? Because in that video, I do kind of talk about the controversy of the Michael album that posthumously came out in 2010, and I don't wanna talk about it a whole bunch in this video. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But yes, that album did come out in 2010, and they had a reproduced version of Behind the Mask. Up until then, you could find parts or snippets of the song in very bad quality on YouTube of Michael's original demo, but otherwise you had the album version of Behind the Mask, which in my opinion, I share a lot of the same sentiments as the fans. That album is a train wreck and it is absolutely a massive fuck up by the estate. However, there are maybe one or two or three songs on that album that I'm at peace with in terms of how they were produced, right? I would always prefer to have Michael's original demo instead, but at least if you're gonna produce it and re-release it to the public, do it in a tasteful way. Most of them weren't, but in my opinion, Behind the Mask was respectable, at least as a reproduction, which is why we're going to be comparing it to the newly officially released good quality version of Behind the Mask for the Thriller album, Michael's original mix. So now at long last, let's listen to that original demo and then we're gonna jump on over to the 2010 posthumous version and probably just compare them, see what maybe we like about it, what we don't like about it. And I'll leave it up to you guys to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Real quickly, before we listen, a brief disclaimer, by definition of it being a demo or a rough draft, it is going to be unfinished. When I'm playing the song, you're going to see the music kind of show the lyrics bit by bit doing its best but honestly in my opinion I feel like it's safe to assume a lot of those official lyrics are just guessing but it's still nice to hear what Michael was thinking in the early stages see musically it is pretty much exactly the same as Yellow Magic Orchestra's version of the song it sounds so of its time too like that whole late 70s early 80s synth sound Great lyrics. 
I love when he would really try with his vocals during demos. He didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I love when you can subtly hear him beatboxing. He got so into his songs rhythmically. sound if he'd recorded it say in the 90s with that kind of gritty rock voice that he would have later. I feel like that would have been epic even though this is still epic. hearing this after being familiar with the posthumous version for so many years. Beatbox. So initial thoughts of that version before we move on to the 2010 posthumous version. Of course, if you've heard Yellow Magic Orchestra's version or original song, uh, Behind the Mask, it is essentially the same musically, but I do derive a lot of pleasure from getting into Michael's brain a little bit and figuring out or hearing him figure out, okay, where would I add an ad lib to this? Where would I chime in the verses for this? What would the chorus sound like? And adding lyrics that I've always been such a fan of. I mean, say what you will about how the other version is mixed, whether you like it, whether you don't, but the lyrics of the song, they remind me a lot of the song, Who Is It? Obviously not exactly the same, but that same kind of theme, if you will. Um, and I've always thought that those types of songs were absolutely inspired by Diana Ross. However, let me know what you think as well. But all in all, I really do enjoy this original demo version, albeit unfinished and a rough draft. You can still kind of gauge the direction Michael wanted to take it. And I am curious because as we know, we've heard demos of Michael's songs before, and then we've heard the final versions, right? Like the, the demo for Beat It or the demo for Billie Jean. So I do wonder if he would have left the Yellow Magic Orchestra music alone, like the instrumental, or if him and Quincy Jones at the time would have kind of mastered it or produced it or added more things to it to make it sound a bit more Michael Jackson-y, if that makes sense. But otherwise, let's now jump to the 2010 posthumous version of Behind the Mask and see how they compare, if we like it, if we don't, how tasteful it was, how respectful it was, and which one we like more. You can already tell that they completely reworked it. They threw everything at it, including the kitchen sink. And I must admit, I know it's not Michael, but this is a pretty bitchin' introduction. <laughs> does have some swag, for lack of a better word. And it feels like a Michael beat, you know? Especially because they throw in his beatboxing. The 
very tight. It's very sharp. But they mixed the order of the lyrics. I like that they kept this part from Yellow Magic Orchestra. I'm almost ashamed to admit it, but this really is well done. Unlike a lot of the other ones on this album. Very tasteful usage of horns, really. Very well produced. I love that they added audio from 92 Bucharest Dangerous Tour. But they do reuse lyrics instead of pulling from more of the demo. Granted, perhaps maybe because they were gibberish. They make it really busy in a great way. All right, so let's unpack it, shall we? This is going to sound sacrilegious. I already feel like I'm committing a sin. I feel like I'm breaking some commandment <laughs> against Michael Jackson, but I do prefer the posthumous estate version of the song. Probably just because, weirdly enough, please, I mean, shred me to pieces if you need to in the comments, but trust that I love Michael Jackson. It felt a bit more like Michael, and probably because they were trying to make it sound like Michael, and while they often did not succeed, I feel they succeeded with this. And the reason the demo, perhaps, Michael's mix, did not feel that way is because, musically speaking, it wasn't a Michael Jackson song. It was a Yellow Magic Orchestra song. Now granted, of course, you have Michael's vocals and his lyrics and his ad-libs and everything, his little beatboxing that, that kind of makes it feel like Michael. But in the posthumous version, let's start with the beat, right? Um, is it the most complex of beats? No, but it feels like a Michael Jackson beat because they mixed his beatboxing over the beat. And something that I adore that Michael Jackson did exceptionally well was craft and create the type of beat that like shatters your spine or that like bruises your eardrums or just like messes with your equilibrium. <laughs> and early signs of it, early days of it was a song like Billie Jean or a song like Leave Me Alone or Smooth Criminal when the beat just absolutely smacks you upside the head. However, in my opinion, it is something that Michael would perfect in the 90s with songs like Why You On A Trip On Me, Tabloid Junkie, or Who Is It, or They Don't Care About Us, Scream, Can't Let Her Get Away, or even if we take it to Invincible in 2001, songs like Unbreakable, or Break A Dawn, or Heaven Can Wait, they just, just hit you. And um, so yes, that is something that Michael would eventually evolve to and do more regularly with his beats, especially after he distanced himself from Quincy Jones, who had a lot of creative control. And no shade to Quincy, because Quincy is key and vital in helping create some of the most amazing Michael Jackson songs. But just personally speaking, I always preferred Michael's work when it was Michael, and it, it wasn't more collaborative with Quincy Jones. So that's one aspect of the posthumous version that I do prefer. Another aspect of it is 
that it's finished. And that's just not even a knock on Michael because a demo by nature is not going to be finished. This one, as mentioned, they threw everything at it production wise. I mean, you have the horns, you have, I believe, vocals by Shanice, which she was a R&B New Jack Swing artist of the 90s. And to my knowledge, she added backing vocals to Michael's Keep the Faith in 91 off the Dangerous album. So they threw some of her vocals in there. And of course, the aesthetic they created, the atmosphere they created by adding what I feel is 92 audio from his Bucharest show of the Dangerous Tour. I could be wrong, correct me if I am, but I think as a Michael Jackson fan, when you've heard and seen everything, I mean, it gets to a point where by hearing the chants and the whistles and just his, in, uh, communication with the audience, you can kind of just pinpoint, oh, it's that concert, it's that show. So I thought that was tasteful. Now, where I do prefer Michael's original mix, his demo, is that you have more lyrics in it. I'm, I'm going to assume that the posthumous version that was on the Michael album, they took lyrics that felt finished, lyrics that were easily understood. Because as mentioned, if you're listening closely, yeah, they have the lyrics on the thing that you can read, but I feel like they're just trying their best. If you listen closely enough to Michael's original demo, some of the lyrics aren't necessarily, not, not coherent, but um, just unfinished or kind of jumbly or mumbled or like, you know, sit behind the mat. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Michael would do that in his demos, but he just hadn't quite finished writing it out. And so if I had to guess when they were remixing the song, reproducing the song, they probably just scrapped the lyrics that they just weren't sure about and grabbed what they were and then used them in repetition in the posthumous version. So that is something I wish that they would have done. Sure, I see why, but I don't think anyone would have minded, especially knowing it's posthumous, knowing that it's a demo, that, you know, it's gonna be that way. That way, at least the lyrics had a bit more to them as opposed to just cutting and pasting and pasting and pasting the same ones. But even still, I mean, I still feel like it was quite a well-rounded effort to reproduce the song. But that is not to say I condone um, the for lack of a better word, fuckery of the estate. And I know there's tons of controversy. If you could find the uh, Michael album now on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, whatever, they have removed songs due to controversy of them not even being sung by Michael Jackson. And a number of the ones that for sure are sung by Michael Jackson were just so butchered and disrespected and were done in the opposite of a tasteful way. I'm trying to think I guess the word is tasteless. I was thinking of the opposite of tasteful, where it just it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel inspired. It felt like Nate neglected entirely what he was wanting to do. But this one and um, much too soon, in my opinion, uh, are a couple. I think also the way they remixed uh, "I Like the Way You Love Me." I think that some of them are more tasteful. Some of them they actually didn't mess with them all too much. So they just kind of polished them. Behind the Mask is one that they completely reworked. But again, in my opinion. In a way, I feel, as a self-proclaimed Michael Jackson fan, at least tastefully. Now, don't get me wrong, nine times out of 10, if I'm presented with a Michael version of something and the version that was done, mixed, produced, whatever, by people who weren't him, I'm going to choose Michael's demo because it's the most authentic, it's the most pure, it's, it's literally him. And also out of respect, because if you know your stuff about Michael Jackson, you know he was a perfectionist, to a fault. I mean, you listen to people who he worked with. Most of those people have said Michael would never want any of his demos to just be released to a perfectionist that's like hell, right? But especially he wouldn't want someone just taking it and reworking it and releasing it, right? Having said that, yes, as blasphemous, as audacious, as sacrilegious as it might be, if I'd rather just hit next and blast one as loud as I can in the car, and if I'm really trying to to vibe and connect with it. Yeah, I'm still choosing the Michael album version of Behind the Mask as opposed to Michael's mix. That's just me, I'm not afraid to say it. I'm sure many of you would disagree with me and if so, let me know in the comments below. In addition to that, of course, let me know as well what other songs by your favorite artists you'd like for this channel to listen to, react to, and review next. As mentioned, if you'd like to support myself and the work I put into these videos, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel even further, you'll find Music Kingdom's Patreon and other affiliate links in the description below. Until next time, this has been another edition of Music Kingdom. Thank you so much for listening with me and I'll look forward to jamming with you in the next one.